Dude, because you are beautiful people. It's just beautiful. Look at you. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. My beautiful wife. <laughs> so we're glad that you're here. You, you make that choice to come and, and worship, perhaps, hopefully. Maybe you come because it was just a hard week and you needed something. Maybe you had a great week and you want to just come and, and praise God. Maybe you just don't know why you're here, but we're glad you're here today. And hopefully as we sing together, as we read scriptures, we pray, as we hear from God's word, that, that more and more it's like, okay, God, you are God. And you love me. You've done great, great work in me, great work for me. And so I invite you to stand with us, if you would, please. <laughs> As we read the scripture together, because this is what God does for us. Let's read this. You reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy. At your right hand are eternal pleasures. Psalm 1611. And I think we need to read this again so we can understand what it's saying for us, right? Talks about joy. And again, sometimes joy comes out our face should come out of face, but joy even in the midst of sorrow. But let's read this again. You reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy. At your right hand are eternal pleasures. Psalm 1611. God, thank you for the day. Thank you for the sunshine. May we bask in your joy today as we sing to you. Amen. So let's sing. I know it's, it's July, but joy to the world.
we look at songs too much to, to Christmas. Great message there that we have joy because of Christ. And so because of that joy, we turn it around and worship to him. So let's sing this next song, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. situation changes that joy and shouldn't I mean our joy is in Christ you know in much of the scriptures they would especially in the Old Testament they would set up something to remind them of an event and the song we're singing come thou found to the blessing it's talking about Ebenezer, and Ezer they they set up a rock and they just called it something to remind them of who God was and what he has done and that, that's why we gather together because we, we need that reminder together that God is good when we look outside or just experience creation outside, it's like it's a reminder to us that God is good. When we understand that, that Jesus came to die for our sins, that's the biggest reminder that God is good because we deserve nothing. But we wander. And so as we sing this song, it's, it's kind of a prayer to God. Just, uh, God, give me stronger. Although those times I look around and, and, and falter, God, you are still good. Come, thou fount of every blessing.
glad that God never, ever lets us go. Maybe see you, please. And kids, come up to Miss Ruth up here to get your worship handouts. And those who are going downstairs with Miss Christy for Children's Church, please follow her. One more, one more straggler coming out there. Not straggling at all. I remember about, about eight years ago, I tried skipping. <laughs> that was last time. It just, you know, things just don't look right at certain ages, right? All right, I need, I need a breeze. Have you ever gotten a Christmas present from someone and you didn't expect it? They hand you a Christmas present and you, oh, for me, thanks. And you don't know what to do because you have nothing for them. You didn't know it was coming from them. It's like all of a sudden there's this gift and, and guilt overwhelms you. Confusion is there and you don't know what to say. So you go, oh, I'm sorry, truthfully, I just didn't get you anything. But we typically don't do that. We're like, oh man, I don't even give it to me today. I, was, I got it at home for you. We lie, right? And, you know, then you scramble to go find something. Here, I got your wallet, you know, just pull it out of your pocket. <laughs> you know, we, we do that. We struggle as a people with getting something from someone unexpectedly. Getting something from somewhere with, that we know we do not deserve. And that's that grace thing, that present, when we feel that, it's like we want to, to give back, we want to work for that present. We want to work for that gift. Sometimes we expect the gifts, but they're really not gifts then. That's an, that's an expectation of something we should get. This world is all about that, and we struggle with this ourselves. I, I read this quote from... Randy Smith says this, it says, all false religion is based on works to achieve God's favor. Read that again. All false religion is based on works to achieve God's favor. And when you base it on works, you will either use God's words as a means to obtain God's favor or ignore God's word and create your own expectations. Both are deadly because both short-circuit God's method of grace. There are, so there are some false teachings, false religions that will use this book, but they'll, they'll pull things out that, that make you have to work for God to love you, make you have to work, be good, do something, wear, go, whatever, to obtain God's favor. And the other part is there's... There's other false teachings that don't use this book at all, but they make up their own things about how if you do this, live this, say this, God's favor will be on you. This verse speaks against that. John 3, 16, For God loved the world in this way, He gave His one and only Son, so everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. This is grace pictured. This is grace magnified. God the Father's only Son, perfect Son, came to this earth, not because we deserved it, not because we got good enough for Him to come to us. He came while we were rebels, while we were sinners. God gave this gift to us, Jesus Christ, that we have eternal life, no more perishing, no more, no more hell, no more God's wrath on us because of Christ and our faith in that. Again, we're, we're in Galatians today, finishing up chapter 2, and then we're going to take a, like a three-week, three or four-week hiatus from Galatians. But Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, remember that Paul has been dealing with this, of people struggling with this gift thing, 
that you have to do something to please God. You have to do something to get his favor upon you. And he says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live now in the body, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. So what he's saying in practicality, if we hold on to teachings and try to live out, if I'm good enough, God will love me. If I'm good enough, God will bless me. If I'm good enough, I can go to heaven. We're saying that Christ died for nothing. Because we could have done it on our own. We could have been just good enough to edge us over. We know we got bad things, but we got enough good things to edge us over into heaven, into God loving us. And we go through that. If I could be good enough, man, if I could just do that, God would, would do this for me. If I could try to right the wrongs I've done in my past. Whew, you ever think about that? I mean, honestly think about if you could right the wrongs you've done in your past. I would spend eternity trying to right those wrongs with all the different people I've wronged. Or if I could follow, if I could do the Ten Commandments, then God would, yes, John, good job. But if we say those things, if we live that way, we're saying, yeah, we didn't need Jesus. Because I could have done it myself. And Paul said, no, Christ died for nothing if you think that way. If you think you can get your righteousness in your life, right standing before God, that's what righteousness is. You're basically saying, God, you're a fool. And that's where these other religions, when you're talking to other people and say all religions go, you know, all religions take you to heaven. So, I mean, just say, oh, I understand you're thinking that way. This is why I say, I understand you're thinking that way, but that makes me that makes Christianity the worst of them all. Because that says, Christianity says that God sent his only son to die for us. And he wouldn't have had to do that if I could have gone this way, if I could have gone that way, if I could have thought this, done this, whatever. Then God's a fool. That's why when you look at all the different religions in the world, all the different teachings that use this book, the Bible, or don't use the book, always you have to go back and say, is it faith in what Jesus did? Is it grace of God that has saved you? And we do this, and we promote this a little bit with some of our talk that we do. Because I've heard this. I've heard this said. Man, if anybody's going to heaven, old Joe Smith over there, he's going, because look at him, he's a good guy. I've heard that. And I'm like, well... Joe may kind of be good, but it's not because of that that he's going to heaven. But we look at people like that. You know, we go to funerals, oh yeah, he's in heaven because he was a great guy. She's in heaven, so, yeah, man, she was lovely. That's not the reason. That's going back and saying, Christ, you did not have to die for me. That's what Paul was fighting here. He was saying, it is by grace. It's not by leading that good life. Romans eleven six. he says, now if by grace, then it's not by works. Otherwise, grace ceases to be grace. It is not by our works that we are saved. It is by grace. And so let's go back to now Galatians 2, 20. This is just a huge verse. You know, and if you've been in church and love, you've heard this verse, heard parts of the verse, you know, I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I mean, this is transformational, by the way. This is that verse that is a changed life verse. But Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. Those are words we just kind of throw out there. I've been crucified with Christ. We talked about the crucifixion. Um... You know, in our terms, the closest we could say maybe I have been electric chair, electric chair with Christ, not electric chair with Christ, because that's kind of a punishment they have used in this nation. 
what cruci crucifixion was, it wasn't something quick, though. These people that they crucified would hang on a cross for days till they finally died. They wanted them to die. The Romans wanted these people to die the most painful death they could think of. And that's why they put them on the cross. I mean, people would hurl things at them. They're, they're trying to catch their breath. The birds would be attacking once they start you know, nodding off. It, it was just a horrible way to die. And when Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, I, I, what does that mean? Because again, we, we sometimes as Christians will say these phrases without really looking into the depths of what this means. Being crucified with Christ means we're no longer under the curse of the law. The penalty for sin was put upon Jesus. The Bible's very clear about it. Old Testament talks about it in, a, in prophecy, and the New Testament talks about it as the present reality. When Christ was crucified, this means that basically I was crucified. You were crucified. We took the wrath of God on our lives, but we didn't do that. Christ did. All the punishment, all the wrath of God for every thought you thought, every word you said, every action you've done against God and against man, which is always against God, was placed upon Jesus from your past, present, and your future. And not just yours, but ours. So Paul's getting this understood in his mind that the full penalty of God's wrath, the full penalty of our sin, was on Christ. And so it's like our life has been crucified on the cross. The full penalty has been paid for all our sins. I, I, I struggle grasping that. I was having a conversation with Linda about this. Because I'm like, I know what I did. I, I know the horrible things that I have done in my past. And I, there's no way that's all gone. But it's true. That's the message of the cross. And, and in this, being crucified with Christ means that we are new creations. That, that old is gone. The, the wrath of God upon my life. And if you're a believer, on your life has been taken away. You have been made a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and see the new has come. Everything's new. And it's not that somebody goes, yeah, they're going to make it because look at them. Look how good they are. That's not what this says. If you are in Christ, if you truly have faith in Christ, if you give your life to follow Christ, you are a new creation. The old's gone. All the wrath is gone. And you're new. You're new. Paul says again in Romans 6, 4, Therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. And so when we give our life to Christ and we're baptized in here we have a dunking tank back there or a river or a creek or pool or wherever. When you're baptized, it's that picture that we have been crucified with Christ. The, picture, the whole work is on Christ. But our picture is we were there, we were dead, we were baptized into his death, but we have been raised and raised to walk a new life. Raised to walk a different life. Raised to walk a changed life. So we talked about this before. Paul's not saying, hey, you're saved, so just go and do what you want. Being crucified with Christ changes our love. Meaning we used to love different. We used to love different things before we came to Christ. It's where we try to find satisfaction outside of God. And we, again, we struggle with this. I'm not satisfied with something, so I'm going to go try this of the world. I'm going to try to find satisfaction. Before we come to Christ, that's what we're looking for. 
try to be good enough. And when I'm good enough, I feel good about myself. I mean, we're art to be good. We're art to do good. But not to find our satisfaction. 1 John 2.16, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of one's possession is not from the Father, but from the world. And this is what we struggle with in our love. It's not wrong to have stuff. I am very, very thankful this morning you have clothes. I am. That's stuff, right? I am. And, and so it's okay to have things, but, but where, is our, where is our direction? That lust is, that's going to bring me satisfaction. On the things that we see, the things that we experience, and the things that we are. Those are those three, three things. We, the things we see, the things we experience, the things we are. Because some struggle in different ways. I don't struggle with those things out there, you know, but I like being called Pastor John. Matter of fact, you got to say it correct. Pastor John, there we go. You know? <laughs> we, we want recognition at times. Or we, we say, I've got to experience that in my life. I, need, I like how it feels, whatever that is. Again, those things are there, but if that's the focus, that's a wrong love. Our love should change. Matter of fact, oh, I took our sign stand today. <laughs> we are loving God and loving people. When we're loving God, our love for people changes. Because we're, we're loving people that that are jerks at times, because you know why? We were jerks, and we still can be jerky at times. We're loving the unloved, we're loving the love, because God loves them, and we are to love them, and show God's love to them. So our, our, our changed life makes a changed love in how we're living. The things of the world becoming, they're good, we're, we're, God thank you for blessing me with these things, but that's not my, my big focus <laughs> is that being crucified with Christ means we have a new way of life. I mean, and it, and it involves this. I mean, look at this outside. You know, you all chose to worship together today. And that's great. And again, it's not a check off list, you know, you better be here next week. I want you here. But it's, it's we, we make a choice in a different way of life on how we live this life. Being crucified with Christ. We're thinking, God, you did this for me. You did this for me. And it's remembering what we used to be. Ephesians 2, 1 to 3, it says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sin. Now, right there is very fact. You were dead. You weren't just bad. You weren't just... No, you know. You were dead. You had no spiritual life. You were dead in your sins. You were dead in your... The things you cross the line. And this is how we did it. And you previously walked according to the ways of the world, according to the rule of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. When before we came to Christ, whether we acknowledge it or not, we were living for Satan. We walked according to how he wanted us to walk. So you uh, uh that was a good guy. That's right. And in that good guyness, you're going, I'm good. That's what Satan wants. I mean, Satan, that's what Satan thought. He said, I am good. And that's why he fell from heaven. That's why God said, nope, you're not out. And a third of the angels follow him. Yeah, those people out there, it says, that Paul says, we too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts, and we were by nature children under wrath as the others were also. So when we go out there, we go, man, that guy deserves to die. I deserve to die. Man, I would hate for you all to know my life. And here, I hear, and through this. I'd hate for you to know it all. That'd be terrible. But God does. And this is the transformational thing, is that God knows that. And that's why he sent Christ for us, because I, no matter what, I used to do, I could not change that. I could not live good enough. Because if I could again, then Christ died for nothing. The idea of being crucified with Christ emphasizes our, our union with Him. Being one with Him. 
and that he died for us. So we trust in what Christ did on the cross as a payment for all our sin, all that penalty. Christ did that for us. And then we rely on him to continue to give us the strength to live for him. So the emphasis here is not on is on what he has done for us and not what we have to do for God. And again, we, we struggle with this. I struggle with this. You know, it's like I've been bad and I better be good so God can love me. I've been bad so I can be a better I need to be a better preacher, a better teacher, a better pastor because God, I don't want you to zap in me. Now God does chastise. He, he spanks us as his children. As it should be. But his mercy and grace is there. And he wants us to have this mindset of, I have been crucified with Christ. And so it's not me living any longer, but it's Christ living in me. Christ living through me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. Here's the key. Who loved me gave himself for me. That is huge. To make it all the way down to personal. Because again, we, we, we want to look at others. But coming down to personal. My choice to live for him is not to be based on, I better be good. But based on, Jesus, what did you do for me? Look what you did because you have done this for me, I am crucifying my life to live for you. It doesn't mean you're necessarily changing your jobs or place where you live or anything that are your friends, necessarily. But sometimes God says, well, you, you might need to. But if his leading, not somebody else's leading, his leading. But we live by faith, and we live by faith because they need to see that same faith in us, the transformation. They need to, to see and, and hear about the love and message of Christ coming through us. Living by faith. Living for Him. And I guess it doesn't, it shouldn't make you a weirdo. I'm a weirdo anyway. <laughs> you know, you don't walk around with the Bible in your hand and just spout scripture all the time. But you're living a real life in your neighborhood, in your home, at your work, in your school, for Christ. And in those occasions where you're like, yes, God, thank you, just for my life, and all of a sudden you see an opportunity to help someone, to share with someone, maybe even encourage or even share the message of Christ for his glory, for their good. Jesus lives in me because he loves me. Jesus lives in you if you're a follower of Christ because he loves you. You are his child. Yesterday, we traveled to St. Louis. I did the wedding of my, my niece. It's the last of my niece and nephews. No more weddings. <laughs> For my pain. But we got to see both our girls, and they're, you know, just in one husband, the other husband had to work. But um, it was great. We could see my mom. You know, it, it was just great. It was family. I, I, and I, I wonder, oh, and my granddaughter, yes, my granddaughter. Okay, so have her wedding. Uh, I talk about her a lot, so, yeah. Yes. But anyway, it's, I, I see Christ loving them, and I see them in different areas and stages of life of their love for Christ. And it's such an encouragement to me. But I can't rely on that. It comes down to me. I am to love him. I love seeing you loving Christ. That encourages me. But I am to love Christ. I am to live for him. We are crucified with Christ, but I am crucified with Christ. Therefore, I no longer live, but he lives and knowing 
that we are crucified with Christ should change us. Should. We have the power now to say no to sin and yes to God. So, in closing, do you know Jesus? Not do you know about him. Do you know him? Do you really know him? Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? Have you made a commitment to him? By faith, we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead and you're saved. But that's not a private issue. You want to tell. You want to share. But for us that, that do know him, is that thought process, I have been crucified with Christ, anywhere in your life. Because, it, I mean, we forget. We get distracted. We all do this. But it should be there. We should remind ourselves. That's what all of this scripture is for, is these reminders for ourselves that, Yes, I have messed up. Yes, I've been selfish. Yes, I, I've tried to get in favor with God, but I need this reminder, God, it's, it's you. And because you love me, because you sent Christ to me, I want to live this crucified life of loving you and sharing that love with others. So, that's on you. That's on me. About where we are with Christ. Let's pray. Father, I do pray for anyone here or listening that does not know you, that today would be the day of their salvation. Today they would say no to themselves and yes to you, that they would confess you and believe and start this walk of faith in Christ. So, Father, I pray for us who are believers that we would know you more. I think God, Paul was, was a, a much more mature man to this point, and but he's wanting others to, to follow Christ and to understand that it is you. You are the good God. You have been so good to us. Because of that, God, we want to live for you. God, we want to strive to love you more and strive to love people more. God, we want to, to know more of your word, to pray, to live out the life of faith that you've given to us that our life can save him and shine. Oh, how I love Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. We're going to close with that song, Oh, How I Love Jesus, the first two verses. And so as we sing, just think, am I being honest as I sing this? Let's stand and sing this, please. <laughs> Satan is real. Satan is our adversary. Uh, the flesh bites at times. We, we grab all the things that Satan throws those doors at. And we just have we have some people who are struggling in our body. And so I just want to lead us in prayer, not just for them, for all of us who are struggling. Because uh, we all have different struggles, but we all need to pray for one another. So let's, let's go to God in one Father, we have gathered here, and at times we even think we're okay, Lord, we, we struggle. But God, you know those on our heart right now. 
that is going through very difficult times uh, where it seems Satan is winning in their life. But God, we know that you are more powerful than he. God, that you can change the hearts. And so, Lord, we pray for these people. We pray for protection. We pray for choices that they would love you more. God, that we would love them more. And God, I thank you that you have given us this body, the church. God, we all need one another. And so Lord, I pray that we would pray to you more for one another. That we would follow more of the scriptures about one another. God, that we could be a stronger body for you, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Brian. Hello. Uh, with that, uh, I'll skip to prayer requests first. Uh, if you have prayer requests, there's forms back there. You can fill out the prayer request. If you want somebody in particular to pray for you, write their name down or go to them personally and ask. Don't be afraid if you're having problems. To talk to somebody. Uh, we'll go back up to the website. Uh, on our website, you can find your bulletin, uh, all the announcements on the bulletin, uh, Summerfest, worships, and everything. Uh, upcoming birthdays. Uh, that, was that was yesterday. I forgot to take that one down. Oh, well, you said you, were, you wanted, she well, wanted to announce twice. Chris wanted it up there twice, but you know. So this is the second time. <laughs> July 9th, it was Chris Bronner's birthday. Uh, upcoming anniversaries, uh, James and Teresa Warnox is on the 13th. Mine and Laura's is on the 12th. Yeah. Yes, you did. Sorry. But I did it. Happy, happy job. <laughs> <time. laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Monday morning, Mama B's at 9.45ish. And let's see, uh, men's prayer will be Wednesday at 8 a.m. And then for and then they go for breakfast at Denny's. Our Wednesday night Bible study, uh, Why Do We Sin? from 6.30 to 7.15. Game night. We sin from 6.30 why, why do we sin? Why do we sin? Why do we sin? Why do we sin at 6.30? <laughs> Game night, Friday night at 6.30. And our movie night is same night. Same night. Same night. July 15th. That will be at 7 30. And so we're still having game night, correct? Yeah, still having game night. So if you want to come and eat and play for a while, and then those who like to go up and watch the movie, uh, we also do the trash pickup at the end of the movie. We'll hand out the glow in the dark, our glow sticks for, for all the children. Uh, just try to be a blessing there. And a lot of that stuff seems small, but the community remembers all the different small things that we do and they point out especially like Laura was at Walmart wearing her New Hope Church shirt uh, Ben McCoy's son-in-law came up wow. to Laura was talking to her cool. so you know it gets out there people remember <laughs> women ministry Diane this month we don't have a regular meeting, but we are going to Mama B's. Yeah, we're going to Mama B's place at Indigo Valley. So that'll be Saturday at 9:30 a.m. Don't be in the service, ladies. Bible study worship only next week will be at 10:30. Uh, so no, no, no Sunday school. No Sunday school. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the members meal and meeting. Will be Sunday, July 17th. That's next Sunday. Uh, Debbie? The full pot line. Um, so we need towels and service. Uh, tableware and drinks will be provided by the church. But other than that, you need drink if that's what you want to eat. <laughs> no sign up sheets, so everybody's on their own. <laughs> and then we'll have a, just a short members meal. Members meeting. After the members meal, can't be. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Summerfest, July 22nd and 24th. Uh, yeah. 
Can you see where it got some stuff starting to go up to get the food set and the theme set? It's an art theme. Um, now God's our designer, creator. It's just going to be amazing. It's it's Friday night, Saturday morning, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. It's for everybody. There's going to be worship. John's going to speak. Our normal 1030 time. But it will be themed around the, the stories of Bible school and all that. We come early at 9.30 like normal. It's just come normal. Well, come. <laughs> just come and we'll plug you in to help while the kids are doing their summer fest things. And then 10.30 will continue on. So it's going to be a really good time. Um, don't forget to register online. Have your people, your kids register. We have these banners are going to go be going up outside on the sign this week. So whoop whoop, show us what you got, guys. <laughs> Yay! So we're back to coming. We're advertising for four-year-olds through those that just finished fifth grade. We have music, crafts, recreation. And of course, God's word. So going to be and snacks, you know, snacks both with recreation. So and these guys will be standing outside with these banners all week long. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Don't hesitate to yeah, see. Invite cards. Yeah, the invite cards. Thank you, Brian. They're at the back table. The little cards to pass out. Yep, yeah, I mentioned registration. All right, thanks, yeah. guys. All you little ones, take some home to hand them out to your friends. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Our offering is there's it's an offering boxes in the back, or you can do it online. And uh, is there anything else, Jeff? Oh, yeah. It's, the next slide is the the next slide. The next thing is a song. It's the Vacation Bible School song. So listen as you leave. Amen. Goodbye. Bye bye. 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 Bye b